Oh look, the M2 money supply is going down. So the total money in circulation is going down. That means inflation is going down, right? I seriously see people with PhDs in economics making this claim on this platform and YouTube. So it's time for another economics lesson with Goldie. Let's go. So let's first explain how debt monetization, which ultimately leads to hyperinflation, actually works. So it starts with the Fed creating money out of thin air, printing money and buying US bonds. And then the government is using that money to spend it in the economy, which creates inflation. But now you have a middleman. Remember the bank bailouts this year, you know, Silicon Valley and so on. So due to regulations, regulations only, the government is forcing these banks to invest into government bonds. That's the only thing they are allowed to buy. So when the government needs liquidity, it taps into the bank's deposits. And this works until it doesn't. Like when you have, for example, a run on the banks caused by rising interest rates, making the bonds these banks are holding lose value. So in response to this crisis, the Fed opened a emergency liquidity facility, also known as the discount window. This has allowed banks to borrow money based on the bond's original face value, even if they lost its worth. And so far, this facility has put $5.53 trillion into the banks. Okay? So congratulations. You created a loophole that's not technically money, it's it's loans, right? So, you know, it shouldn't increase inflation because it's not technically money. However, it works the same way. The Fed prints money and the government spends it. And that is that spent money is injected into the economy and increases the money supply and thus creates inflation. It doesn't matter that you created a middleman called the banks. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the M2 money supply chart says. It doesn't matter what your charts say it creates inflation the same way. You know, you have a dish and it has too much fat, so you remove the fat, but to, you know, replace the fat and the flavor, you add a bunch of sugar. It has the same effect. It doesn't matter that you replace the fat with sugar. Just to put this into perspective, during the COVID-19 crisis, around $6 trillion was monetized. And on top of that, you have the stimulus packages, which comes roughly to about $10 trillion which is also the reason why we're experiencing the inflation we're experiencing right now. Now compare that to the 2008 banking crisis, the bailout was half a trillion dollars, so only 500 billion. This year, okay, to bail out all the banks, we have spent $5.53 trillion, trillion with a T. That's 10 times the 2008 bailouts, 10 times. And it's also the 13th month anniversary of the imminent recession that hasn't come. But the Goldie, the yield curve is inverted. Isn't that a sign that a recession is, you know, about to come? What you don't understand is that those bailouts already happened and they are 10 times the amount of 2008. So the next, you know, recession slash correction is going to be biblical. And if you recall, the 2008 crisis lasted until 2015. If there's a recession happening now, it won't be resolved until the next election. And the Democrats know this. So to be reelected, they have to make this somehow believable. There's so much more I would like to talk about, but why don't you learn for yourself? All of this, what I'm talking about, I wrote down in my newest book, Awakening, link in the bio which is now my second book that I wrote and I got super positive feedback from people who already read it. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time.